Hooks in the house. How's everybody doing? Got a little music going on a Saturday. Haven't done a video in a while, so I put one together. Gonna try a little different is do a little sports talk. And you got the rain going on here, so thought that the song's appropriate, so why not play it? So all of a sudden I was playing, I was like, yeah, what the heck, it's raining outside. I'll play that. Hope everybody's having a good time. Uh, like I was saying, I am looking to do a little sports talk. Um, something I was going to do last year uh, when coronavirus came about, uh, right when it happened, UW baseball, UW Milwaukee baseball, I was going to start talking about, and that just fell off the shelf. And never followed up on it, so I thought, why not do that? So I'm going to talk about UW Milwaukee baseball, basketball, men's and women's. And uh, go from there and see how this works. I will have some movie talk uh, a little further. Um, see if I can keep people somewhat interested in my video, doing something a little different. So uh, UW-Milwaukee sports does not really get that much talked about in the city of Milwaukee. Uh, so um, more or less Marquette and then UW, um, the Badgers, Madison kind of gets... Uh, <laughs> the more or less the, the talk. So uh, start off with UW-Milwaukee baseball. Um, they finally got into uh, a few, uh, Franklin Field, which is a nice sports complex. So they're playing at a decent ballpark. So that's going to help them. Uh, they're all the only Division I baseball team in Wisconsin. And right there, that should give them a little talking point. They don't get any. If it's a blip on the radar. And so uh, by what I'm about to say, probably be, I think, top three stories uh, for talking about UW-Milwaukee baseball. You know, just talking out of my head there a little bit. Um, the thing with the program is, with it being in Milwaukee, they have to go on the road for like their first, usually 12 games before they have a, a home game. And this year they started out 0-9, um, but they are now 11 and 15, so that means they went and turned it around since coming off that road trip. Um, they're 11 and 6, so tells you that getting some home cooking helps. Um, head coach is Scott Duffick, and uh, leading player right now for batting is Luke Seidel. Uh, he's a utility player, and he's batting 350 in. Uh, 21 games so far, so uh, not bad for uh, that. Uh, the one thing is this ball team played at, uh, it was Hank Aaron Park is what it was called, but it was more or less just a rundown um, ball play park, just nothing. And it's kind of sad, you know, called Hank Aaron Ballpark, and it just doesn't have the love that it should get, I guess. Um so if you're looking for something, and it's affordable game, uh, they have uh, COVID uh, restrictions at the ballpark, but it is something that is a, a cheap game if you're looking for something affordable for the family uh, to do. Uh, so throw that out there. And if you enjoy baseball, um, again, they're in the Horizon League. And uh, to get to the NCAA tournament, unless you're like undefeated or two or three losses, you have to win that. Horizon League Championship to get a, a bid to the tournament. So hopefully they keep things going with 11 and 6. You never know. Um, next, uh, UW Women's Basketball. This is kind of a bright uh, point. They were 20 and 8. Um, head coach Kyle Reckless. I hope I didn't butcher that that bad. Uh, she's the head coach. Uh, again, 20 and 8. Uh, they had a decent uh, win streak. Um, I don't know if they would, maybe won 12 in a row or something like that. Uh, ended up, you know, 28. Got to the WNIT where uh, they won their first round game, 84-46 uh, over Drake. And then lost to St. Louis, 44-61. Uh, leading returning scorer is Megan Wolstead. Um, she averaged at 12 points. Uh, the team does have some height it seems like, for women's basketball, so that they should do all right. Um, 
it's again a program that uh, could use a little more talking. Um, again, Division One um, counts for something a little bit, I think. Next, uh, men's basketball. Not so much. 2020-21, uh, they were 10 and 12. They ended up uh, canceling some games because of COVID. Uh, they ended up playing at the Clatchy Center, which is a bona fide uh, high school gymnasium. Uh, with COVID, though, that's a good thing. Uh, usually, they play their games at UWM Marina Arena downtown. It's uh, not a bad place to go if next year when uh, things get closer to back to normal and people are allowed. If you're looking for Division One basketball and not, and worried about capacity, UW-Milwaukee is one that you'll be able to get seats and be spaced, uh, no doubt about it. Um, again, a product, both all the products here are affordable. If you're looking to do something with the family um, compared to you know some other programs, so uh, head coach Pat Baldwin, uh, he came from Northwestern. It's in his fourth year. I'm going to say he's possibly on the bubble for next year. Um, I hope he can turn it around. He, I think their biggest man on the uh, floor was 6'8 uh, for like rebounding. And that's going to be hard to do in Division One. I. I don't care if you're in the Horizon League or what. Uh, so... Uh, a returning name on that program is supposedly Vin Baker Jr. Uh, so former Milwaukee Bucks, uh, Vin Baker, his son. Um, I don't know what's been going on. He transferred and then he's been out. I think he was injured a year. Um, so I'm not sure on how if he's definitely back next year or not, but there's a name there. Uh, their leading scorer is a junior, uh, Deandra Golston, a guard, he averaged 16 points, uh, 16.8 uh, points a game and uh, something to look forward to. And hopefully, uh, you know, they all success to all the UWM uh, sports. Um, something that, uh, again, I think uh, for what I just talked about is probably the most sports uh, talk about UW-Milwaukee that's going on. <laughs> I hope not, but uh, that's that. So movie talk, um, three movies. Um, gonna start off with uh, a zombie, The Dead, 2010. Uh, a soldier, uh, American soldier has to go across Africa and survive uh, to try to find uh, locate. It's a good movie, um, surprised me. If you're, you know, a zombie movie, action movie, it works. Uh, Rob Freeman, Prince David Osia are in the movie. And I didn't know what to expect, and they ended up being a decent movie. Almost, It came off as a sequel, and I think there possibly is, but it isn't the same people. So I um, have to check on that. Next one, this one's kind of a thumbs down. Silencer, 2018. Uh, a hitman doesn't come through on his last uh, hit, and the boss decides to take his kid. Um, and Johnny Messner and Danny Trejo are in this. The role Danny Trejo plays, I was not... There's a part where he kidnaps his daughter, uh, Johnny Messner's daughter, and it just, it's strange. Uh, he's kind of trying to replace her, and the storyline just, I don't know, it could have clean, been cleaned up. But a uh, movie that it, I'll just say, if you see it, um, nothing extra, you're not going to miss anything. If you, if you watch it, yeah. Uh, and then my last one, uh, going with Time Cop, 1994, uh, John Claude Van Damme and Ron Silver. Uh, Ron Silver plays a decent uh, bad guy in the movie. Um, good uh, movie about stopping crime in the past uh, so that things don't change. And uh, decent movie. Um, I never saw the sequel. Um, I should see it just to see what it's like. But I kind of was like, yeah, it's one of those movies, like, do you really want to push the envelope? 
So those are my movies. I uh, did a little sports talk. Thanks for listening. And have a good one. I appreciate everybody. Have a good one. Bye.